this week's Cardiology Countdown, we actually have four studies, the beginning with a cocaine-induced acute coronary syndrome study, a prospective look over several years at a university hospital in Barcelona found that 24 out of their 2,700 patients had clear documentation of cocaine in the urine and a patient admitting to use. They found that these patients had higher um, peak troponin levels and a higher mortality compared with age-matched non-cocaine-induced acute coronary syndromes, and thus an interesting look at um, an infrequent but uh, difficult problem. Now, another study at the number three spot is a risk score developed for acute aortic dissection. And this comes from the International Registry of Aortic Dissection, led by Kim Eagle, where they looked at three different categories of high risk. The first being a high risk uh, condition, that is Marfan syndrome or known aortic uh, disease or aortic valve disease. Then high-risk clinical features, that would be, say, ripping or tearing pain, and high-risk um, exam features, such as a new aortic regurgitation murmur or a pulse deficit. And so looking at a risk score of 0, 1, 2, or 3, depending on whether features in each of these categories was present, they found that the patients with a risk score of 2 or 3 could could go and should go really for immediate surgical consultation and expedited imaging with an eye towards getting to the OR as quickly as possible, whereas those with a risk score of uh, zero could proceed to a next diagnostic test and um, and risk score one look quickly at the EKG um, and chest x-ray and then move to aortic imaging. And thus a very useful new clinical algorithm deriving from this risk score. At the number two spot is a study of uh, now emerging drug dabigatran used in atrial fibrillation, but a study in acute coronary syndromes. This was the so-called REDEEM trial as a dose-ranging study in 1,800 patients, looking at several doses ranging from 50 milligrams twice a day up to 150 milligrams twice a day. They found, uh, not unexpectedly, that the higher doses had a higher risk of bleeding. This is in an ACS patient receiving dual antiplatelet therapy. It was a modest-sized trial, and so they didn't see any difference in clinical outcomes, but it was empowered to do so, but does raise uh, some caution in using dabigatran in addition to dual antiplatelet therapy. And so larger studies will be needed to define that safety and benefit risk. At the number one spot is a study from Jack Imaging this month um, that looks at what is often a vexing problem of how to treat angina in patients who don't have coronary disease. And this is something seen more often in women. And so there's a pilot study done in 20 patients that was a randomized, double-blind crossover study of renolazine, the newer antianginal agent. And they found that during renolazine treatment, patients had improvement in the Seattle Angina Questionnaire, their angina stability, and in quality of life. They also did CMR perfusion imaging and found a trend towards improved ischemia in those patients. And so this will set up a larger study, but does show promise of using renolazine for patients with angina without coronary disease. And so for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon. <laughs>